stepped up out of bed, I'm ghetto, ghetto. I don't give a fuck, but praise God, I can see the light. Everybody talk about race, this race. Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Rizzo. All right, Larry, thanks. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New England Patriots. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. forward for a couple up past the 30. Let's see what the offense comes with here. Second and eight. Ready to throw on second down. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. From midfield, here's Brady. Looking deep downfield. This is caught inside the 15. They give him a gain of 37. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big time play right there. Brady gives this one to Lewis. And a nice pick up there. He gets about five down to the four yard line. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Brady going to throw. And they're going to get to him. A sack. Sacked back at the nine-yard line. Avery Jones in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. Well, every now and then, you just absolutely outguess yourself. Third and inches, and they decide not to run the ball. You end up seeing the end result. The end result was not good. They elect to pass, and it backfires. So the opening drive for them here on their home turf results in a field goal. Now, that's the way you want to get things started. Your stadium, your crowd, you've got the ball. Put points on the board first and let everyone start to celebrate. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Jacksonville taking the field. There's their quarterback, Blake Bortles, who had somewhat of a roller coaster year, but more wins this season than in his first three years combined. And look, the defense helped, but the bottom line, they were with an earshot of going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, no matter what you say about his season, roller coaster or not, he did the biggest thing. He led his team to two playoff wins. And just what you said, within an eyelash of taking out the New England Patriots and representing AFC in the Super Bowl, a really great finish for Blake Bortles and the Jaguars. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. And Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ink, throw it across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Stephon Gilmore. And he's just across midfield and down at the 49-yard line. Bortles simply cannot keep putting his team, putting his defense in these types of predicaments. He's got to take care of the football. And last season, a lot of the turnovers, just like this one, in Jags territory, 11 of the 16 really put them in a tough spot in plus territory for the opposition. Over the middle, that's caught by Hogan. <laughs> a big hit. 
Knocked down sideways at the 41-yard line. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Ah, yes, Brady to Gronk. You think these two are in sync? Without a doubt. And look, they both understand what they can do for each other. Gronk knows if he gets open, the ball's going to be there. And Tom Brady knows what a great security blanket Gronk is. When all else fails, you find big 87. Even with the good move he showed, he'll be brought down short of the 15. The completion good for three, and it's second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Now they'll run with Lewis. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Call it a four-yard pickup, but it leaves him a few inches short here on fourth down. Him. Short distance kick missed. No good. Way wide to the right. And this score will stay right where it is. Jags taking over on offense here in a second. And what a season, Charles, it was for Jacksonville. Some people did like them as a dark horse coming into the year, and they really responded. Heard recently at one of the, you know, all-star games, college all-star games, a scout saying, well, heck, haven't they been the dark horse for the last five years coming into the season? And he seemed a little bit bitter, so I'm going to let him go on that one. But the point is well taken. They have been building towards this. Really good drafts, really supplemented in free agency. And, yeah, they were a dark horse, but they played awfully well. 11 wins, two more in the playoffs. I think right now they'd love to get Allen Robinson back at wide receiver and add another playmaking tight end. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Now Bortles on the bootleg. Oh, look at the juke. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. And give him five yards there, and it's enough for the first. So here we go, first and ten now. They go play action here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Kyle Van Noy coming in from that outside linebacker spot to bury him for a loss of seven. And there they bring pressure from the inside and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And in this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. He's the one who got home. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Go, go. Three, three, nine. Three, three, nine. The play fake to Ivory. Now Bortles. And Robinson with a big catch. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you at important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up the first down. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll be second down.
from the gun. It's Bortles. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. That's a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work on a little bit more. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. David Harris coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Completes it left side to the tight end, Lewis. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. So look at this. Here's the field goal unit coming out. And he is going to need to bomb this one. This was the old NFL record distance for decades. A 63-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's an empty possession. And as a kick, CD, I want to get your thoughts on some potential free agents this offseason before we change the possession here. Now, caution, many of these guys could be resigned, I know, but who are some of them? Kirk Cousins is one. Yeah, we're talking about difference makers. Kirk Cousins at the quarterback position. He's going to be coveted around the league for, by quarterback needy teams. Case Keenum had a big year. Could he move? But how about running backs? Le'Veon Bell, Deion Lewis. Some pass catchers, Jimmy Graham, Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins, and about the guy who goes and gets quarterbacks, DeMarcus Lawrence had a monster year for Dallas last season. Yeah, a lot of big names that could be out there as free agents. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks right at the 20. It'll be a Patriot first down on a pickup of 16. That time a slant, Brady in general on those quick hitters, he just releases the ball so fast. He does, and he's so accurate. But most of the time, he wins before the ball's even snapped by his pre-snap read. Finds out where the defense is and delivers it to the proper place. A gain of six there on first. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. that one incomplete there. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. And now it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. Brady to throw for it on fourth down. And that is going to be incomplete. The Patriots come up empty on fourth down. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here on the turnover on downs. I want to give a hat tip real quick, Charles, to J.J. Watt before the possession switches here. Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year, and they totaled up how much he helped raise for hurricane relief, $37 million. Incredible. Hurricane Harvey, which really hit the Houston area in a big way, and his original goal was $200,000. So <laughs> congratulations to J.J. Watt and all the people who participated. And Greg Olson of the Panthers, Benjamin Watson of the Ravens, both tight ends, also nominated and finalist for the most prestigious award as determined by the NFL, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And some space here. 
Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. to throw on second down and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. The Jags first down, Bortles to Robinson. to play here in the first half. Back to Foxborough after this. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Larry Ridley. Larry will have the highlights of this first half, but he won't have touchdowns because we haven't had any to this point. But there's still time, though, partner. Well, Bulls. <laughs> and he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. On first down, Bortles. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and it's a second down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. On second down, here's Bortles. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumbled. It's loose, and the Patriots have it. Another tough one there for Blake Bortles, partner. 2015, yeah. led the league in fumbles as a quarterback right? at 14 of them. But you just expect that to get better with experience in the league and, of course, better support from his offensive line. In this case, though, he kind of reverted back to that year. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. 17 yards there for the Patriots as they've got themselves a first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Now Brady, and nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away to second down. Oh man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Brady will try again on second down. Over the middle, it's Amendola. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. On play action, now Brady. This is caught, it's Cooks. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Brady connecting with Cooks for the Patriot first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. And his throw is incomplete. Gronkowski unable to hang on, and that'll bring up second down. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well. Every now and then, they don't come down with the football. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. 
So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Plus like that at just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. Right side, that's complete to Gronkowski. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. Brady now on first down. It's caught outright Amendola. And he is out of bounds just a yard or two shy of the 10. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. That was a nicely run slant like route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. And that extra yardage makes this upcoming field goal attempt much more manageable. Agreed, because when you talk to defensive coordinators, they always tell us the 35-yard line on our side of the field, that's the line we guard the most aggressively, because once they get there, they believe. And this is caught. Touchdown, Patriots. Deion Lewis as time expires in the first half. And the Patriots add six to their lead. You knew time was going to run out, so this had to be in the end zone, and somehow they were able to find a window and get it done. Very easy for us to talk about up here that, yes, all that had to happen, but when time's running down, sometimes your brain compresses a little bit, too. They show great poise, understanding of situation, making sure they get to the end zone in order to complete that pass and take a nice momentum into the locker room. All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Patriots are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Jaguars didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. All right, let's do it. Here's a look at the first half highlights. Jaguars now later on the drive. Harris is going to get to the quarterback here. This will go for a loss of eight. Waiting seconds of the half. Lewis has got the catch in traffic. And it's caught for the touchdown. As they go out in front, 10-0. So that's it for us at the EA Sports Studio. We'll go back now to Gillette Stadium for the start of the second half. So both teams have their marching orders. And we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. Four yards remaining now on second down. the draw with Fournette. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about a different style of running in order to get this guy going. Bortles now to throw. Caught out left side by Robinson. And he's brought down, but following a pretty juke move that gives him the first down. A Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. 
This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. And he's going to be taken down deep into Patriot territory. A gain of 32 that time. If the post pattern is often equated as a changeup route, how about when you throw it to your big guy down the center of the field, covered or not, you have great confidence he's going to come down with the football. And when he does, as we just saw, long gains often result. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. I know they don't like to hear it when they get to a certain age, but then you have to start to use your, your skills, your wiles, right, your mind to beat guys to the football. And getting your toes tapped in bounds definitely qualifies as that, doesn't yeah, it? The veteran showing he still has the agility. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open. He catch the ball. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great play there. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars are back with it a score. And they're able to run it in. It started with the battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So here are the Patriots now. They get ready for their first possession of half number two. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Did they... And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Calais Campbell in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. Well, that's the second time they've gotten to Brady, and you've got to do it a variety of ways. You want your regular pressure. Sometimes you have to bring extra. But in this case, they got to him, and that just doesn't happen very often. It's a rarity. He's just such a veteran. His pocket presence so good. But, hey, tip of the cap to the D. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. New England on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and five. Shotgun now for Brady. Buying time to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Tom Brady flashing the mobility, scrambling there for a first down. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there, and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. Here's Brady to throw, and he'll get up to the 43-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Sliding out of the pocket. Dumps it off to Lewis. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Four yards on the pickup. And they're going to have a third down. Instead of the running back in New England, sometimes they like to call them the passing backs. They, they get them the ball in different ways, don't they? They certainly do. Think about the ones they've had in recent vintage. You talk about Kevin Falk, Danny Woodhead, Shane Vereen. James White could have been the MVP in the Super Bowl if it wasn't for a certain quarterback that was on the field that day. It'll go as a nine-yard loss on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. And he gets this away. And look at this. This is a good one. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Well, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit them over the top. Completes it to Lee. The reception good for seven. It's third down. And he went in route there from the slot for the completion. 
love how he runs his routes because it's all setting up your defender. Give him a little something one way, take it the other way. Head and shoulder fake. Sometimes you make one step to the outside, then break it inside. Really well run route. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. And what a weapon to have when you can use your quarterback as a short yardage runner and pick up first downs. Fournette, a first down carry. And some big time hitting going on there. He is knocked to the ground right at the line of scrimmage. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Throwing now is Bortles. Seven yards on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. The Jaguars on third down. They've been excellent, six for seven. Here it's third and two. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment, the defense. jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. Bortles now on first down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Robinson. The 20, 10, touchdown, Jaguars. Allen Robinson, 57 yards. And the Jags are able to cash in for six. And nothing too crazy there. A quick slant, and then he just had a seam. He found a seam. And when you hit it on the run like that, and I mean the pass right to the receiver who's already in motion and moving, sometimes he just takes it and runs away from everyone else. And he ran it into the end zone. And the defense, they've got to adjust there quickly. That's tough on there. That's really tough because everything was executed well. Balls out of his hands quickly into the hands of the receiver. And then he was now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position, you get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen, because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. Brady shoves him off at the 20. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down. It will. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. And this is complete. It's Allen. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. He was trying to force it in there to Amendola, and that'll bring up second down. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. And that's caught by Gronk for a Pats touchdown. Rob Gronkowski from a yard out. And the Patriots have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. What a great weapon. So often, such a big mismatch. And there's no route he can't run. You name it, he's going to do it. And he's a...
Koskowski now out to kick it away. This one taken from the seven. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They felt their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you don't lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. Bortles now on first down. Dumps it off to Fournette. And he'll go down at the 28. It'll be a gain of four. And it'll be a second down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot. Oh, no, he lost the football. And unfortunately, he's able to reel it back in, but it's going to go down as a big loss here on the play. Well, that was a big oops right there. But how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Now pounce right back on it, keeps possession. On third and long, it's Bortles. A dump off for Ivory. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. It'll be a gain of nine, and that's going to bring up the fourth down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. And Lambo will put this one through. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. I tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. On first and 10, here's Brady. Going underneath for Lewis. 17 yards there for the Patriots as they've got themselves a first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. A gain of six there on first. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. But to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball, they've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. It's a gain of seven, and that'll make it second down. That completion helps out in a nice way. Now they can take a little bit more time, but guess what? They've got to make sure on their throws that they see it open, not just anticipate it. And Cooks has it over the middle. And now the Jags defense deciding to call a timeout. 
And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Red zone opportunity. This is Lewis. And this carry terminated at the eight yard line. Good stick skill showing the power, but just not much room to operate. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they'll talk. Th Things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Lewis and he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds four yards on the play and that leads to the first and goal so many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation it's almost and he can't get a throw away he's taken down and play is stopped here timeout it's the defense calling the timeout here That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. To throw is Brady. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Barry Church. And nothing there on the return. They've got the football, but they'll have to start this drive at their own four-yard line. Well, they thought they were going to break the tie. The defense had other plans. They were already in field goal range, but boom, an interception. I don't know if this was a case of being a little bit too greedy with the opportunity to put points on the board, but give credit to the guys on the defensive side. Hung in there, battled, and made a key play. But well, they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Again, it's Fournette. And now running right through it. And he will lose yardage here back to his own six. Now whistles blow and the Patriots are going to take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Third down, here's Ivory. And he will have the first down here as he's up to the 15. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. They had to get it away from their end zone somewhat, but still a long way to go. Had to start somewhere. That's probably the best outcome possible. on the give to Fournette and he'll take this for a short gain on what will prove to be the final play of this ball game. Four quarters not enough for all even and to overtime we go. How much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game? How much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled? And here in overtime if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. To return it is Corey Grant. Now a hit and a loose football. Sheds off the tackle. As that ball got away from him, and <laughs> he saw the opposing team recover it. You felt his pain? Oh, I felt his pain, <laughs> and you know what was going through his head. 
tuck it away. Mm -hmm. Take care of the ball. All the things he hear all week in practice. He and this will be caught. Touchdown. They need it over time to get it done, but put this one in the win column. My partner, great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime. A little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing powerful. I just want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters what you wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we got the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Patriots winners here at home as we say so long from Foxborough.